Welcome to the acclaimed podcast, The Deep Dive, featuring your esteemed hosts, Andy Monitor and Drew Dinzik, powered by Betsperts. Welcome to The Deep Dive. Um, this is March, Andy. Uh, <laughs> get mad. It's been March. Let's get mad. Um, we're going to give you guys everything you need to know, everything you ever wanted to know about how to win money on the, or really just how to, how to enjoy the M- and, and NCAA tournament. Don't bet on it. <laughs> Does it still say that on the brackets? Anything? No, it doesn't. Uh, oh, I think God, they finally so gave up on don't bet on it. So embarrassing. Um, but honestly, like that's kind of not even really joking advice. Like, there's ways to make money in the tournament. There's fun ways to play pools. Certainly, find a survivor pool. Get involved in a Calcutta. Definitely do your traditional bracket pools, particularly the ones with your friends with ch- coming with bragging rights. Um, but uh, you know, you shouldn't be thinking you have a big. But don't don't come in this with a big swinging dick, thinking you have an edge against uh, these markets at yeah. this time of year, because you probably don't. Uh, and these we are weird markets anyway, that. where you just have so much volume that's so uh recreational that does kind of change the way things kind of can be interpreted like if you're seeing a big move doesn't mean like the world's sharpest group is on that side like it doesn't <laughs> like there's lots well, of noise in the especially market. with the the thursday to you know the the saturday and sunday games where that market is you know th- that's a different kind of market than the ones that are going to sit up all week because cool. there's Great an instant call. reaction and we have you know just that quick 36 hour turnaround 48 hours. That, but you're absolutely it, right it, yeah, it does, you those are a little difference different. in maturity of markets out with no and question I, and i was i did talk about this too because i was as i said to you guys i was doing a different podcast and it was it was more aimed towards some you know some, maybe some people who hadn't bet a lot of college basketball yet but they like college basketball because it was a north carolina based thing and they had just legalized sports betting Mm-hmm. And I think the big, you know, we don't do enough responsible gambling talk, but like, take it easy, cool your jets, guys. <laughs> so if, you know, if you haven't bet a lot of basketball, don't, let's not go fire on like 18 games tomorrow because I mean, you, there's like six, you know, we don't even have the tournament really yet. There's like six on because we got NIT, we got CBI, we got yeah. CIT, we got play ins. You're going to have, you know, four tournaments going on at once. You're going to have so many games, you're going to have second halves. Like, a little tip, I, I don't know if I've ever brought this up on a show, but something I do, especially when I start to feel like I'm maybe live betting a little too much soccer during the day, I just I have a notebook that I always have next to me for notes and, and things for meetings and whatnot. I'll just flip the page, I'll write down all my bets, and I will add up that number. And I will I will write a big negative sign in front of it and be like, am I <laughs> I'm losing this yeah, we're, like, gonna, we're not, not gonna saying, ruin our weekend, right? Okay. It's not it's not common. <laughs> it's not likely, but you absolutely it's not like getting hit by lightning going 0 and 10. You right. could go 0 and 10, man. These things happen. If if that number is like going to affect your ability to pay rent, oh I for sure have. Yeah, it's gonna affect your ability to pay rent or yeah. you know buy your girlfriend something nice. That's, Maybe that's uh not, yeah. Well, yeah. Pump, pump, the pump the brakes. Sure, um, um, we should introduce yeah, our yeah, guy. Yeah, let's introduce our guest. So um, nobody wants to hear me talk about college basketball. I don't know the first thing about this shit. I don't bet this shit. And honestly, my process for how I bet NBA is so incredibly different from how you can – It's a different sport, diff- It might as well be a different sport because I go player level and, I mean, you got player data for these guys. You got a good idea of after 32 games of some of these guys that is going to be their entire career is, the, is what they played as – freshman this year and they might be the most important person okay, good luck you think you can nail that good luck uh so with that uh we we reached out to a good friend in our network uh mr tim at t hold 42 on twitter if you're looking for him uh and uh, the reason we reached out to him is pretty obvious uh if you don't do a lot of college basketball research by your damn by on your own <laughs> by your damn self you need to have friends who do, and the friend that we know that does the most research, uh, and the proof is in the pudding because he puts it together in a very useful reference, is Mr. Tim Hold, uh, and uh, T Hold forty two on Twitter. Tim, welcome back to the deep dive. It's great to see you again. I hope you were doing well. And uh, how was uh, how's your college season been? Yeah, thanks for for having me, gents. Always 
good to be on the program. Um, college basketball, to be honest, I, I was treading water a little bit earlier in the season, so kind of got a little bit more involved as we got closer towards conference tournaments and whatnot. So mm-hmm. um, uh, the same for the general public, I imagine, too. Uh, once March <laughs> comes around, and as you mentioned, those those folks in North Carolina now with legal betting, they might uh, get a little bit too wet on the uh, the college tournament. But, um, yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. Watching – I uh, said that you're going to start to hate watching young men take free throws late in the game. Ooh, sure. People that bet Brown, you know, and the, I mean, when it's it's exactly. like, Hey, there are some very, uh, there are some very respected players in the space uh, who had losing seasons this year for the first time in a long time. Uh, so don't, <laughs> don't, if you, if you treaded water, if you came out, uh, if you came out even, I think uh, you can hold yourself a uh, head up high compared to some of the other very notable and well publicized stories. And we'll kind of leave it at that. Um, so uh, talk to me a little bit about your process and about uh, kind of how you see sort of the current state of data uh, and across the uh, college basketball landscape. Yeah, I think, um, I mean, everyone kind of gravitates towards Ken Palm now. I, I think he's more well known than he's ever been in the space. Probably, um, to be honest, I mean that's where a lot of the data that I that I pull for in this sheet comes from. Um, so I mean, I still I still use it to a to a degree. Um, it's definitely something reliable, but there are some other opportunities out there that that people have used, like you know Haslam metrics, um, Torvik, other things. Um, Torvik, I I added some stuff to the sheet this year that. I had it in pasts from from Torvik that I, I really found interesting, um, such as like stats from the last literally the last month of the season from compared to where a team started at the beginning of the year, um, offensive and defensive efficiency wise. So I think that's that's been pretty helpful as well going through this process. But um, it's a lot, man. It's a 68 60, teams, right? That um, there's a lot of data. There's a lot of stuff out there. People are talking about literally the same thing because there's nothing else going on but the NBA, right? So, um, yeah. yeah. Sorry, hockey. Um, oh, yeah. I'm, f- I'm fading. <laughs> I'm full fading Ken Pomeroy this uh, this March. I don't think his head's in the game. We got the Women's World Curling Championships on right now. <laughs> like, there's no way he can focus on both things. <laughs> Again, loves curl. I guarantee he's betting on curling and stuff. Uh, he always does. He always has, like, curling takes if you follow him. But, no, well – uh, maybe anybody who's looking for some of those data sites, I'll put them in the show notes. Ken Palm, Bart Torvik does a great mm-hmm. job. There's another one called Hoop Math that has a bunch of really good stuff. I'm just, I just should go through all my like bookmarks here. Yeah, Torvik, Torvik is my Torvik does a really because, good one with the, yeah, Tor- with I'll, the I'll bracketology just, I'll stump, as well. I'll, yeah, I'll stump for Torvik just because visually, visually, it's he good. kills, he kills it. But it's it. it's yeah. it's nicer. It's easier to split out some of the data if you want to look at just conference games. Yeah. Yeah. If you want to look at if you want to look at some smaller splits of data, filtering. Uh, the site is pretty solid for filtering. So and that yeah. one is that one is free. So I don't know how he uh, <laughs> he does that one for free. So I don't know. He should probably charge money for that. It's a very good site. I it it's this I have, I'm just checking right now. Adblock Plus is blocking zero ads on that site too. So he is just a solid gold, true blue, loves college basketball and wants you to have the correct data so that you can put your understanding of these teams into context. Okay. Well, um, do you think uh, in general um, the uh, widely availability, you know, wide availability of, I guess, like, what's, what's the right word? Like tempo, uh, you know, I guess Torvik's kind of uh, data. Offensive, defensive, efficiency. Specifically high, like temp- yeah, ten- yeah, tempo uh, uh, adjusted or Ken Palmer's efficiency adjusted like like yeah. that you know that you know having that in you know as a tool uh, really did change the game for a lot of people from a betting standpoint I got to imagine right yeah I, I I would think so I mean so many people now podcasts live shows they're they're referencing efficiencies all the time three point rate three point percentage rebound rate stuff like that I know I heard you earlier in the week talking about um, I forget what team it was but somebody on just a terrible defensive rebounding team. And there people weren't really talking about that uh, years, even four or five years ago. So um, it's definitely becoming more common knowledge. It feels like. Okay. Are there specific statistics or specific uh, statistical um, kind of profiles or fingerprints, I guess that you look for as you look at the teams at the top who might be on upset alert or the teams at the bottom who might be uh, Cinderella potential. Yeah. I think um, teams at the top that, 
we kind of on the the sheet that I put together there we have red flag teams, which basically are a team that does something good on one end and not good on the other end. Um, so like Alabama, they stick out right away. They're <laughs> great offense, dog shit on defense. So defense, option, um, sure. yeah, very optional. Um, so that's that's something that stands out. Also for some of the upsets potentially when it come you mentioned tempo before some of the bigger disparities in tempo. Um, sometimes some Cinderella teams can kind of make difficult for uh, a top team. Um, that's something also that is that has worked in the past as well. Let's dig into that a little bit. There's there's some weird ones. I, I was going to ask about. I got to check my notes. I think it's Vermont as a, the, a bit of a plotter, but as a conference, it's a fast conference. So they're like the one slow team in the fast conference. Uh, all the other teams tend to be above average for tempo in general. So they're playing those teams, but they're just way more talented and they're beating them. And it's one of those where you wonder what happens when they go up against a team with fast tempo who's actually good and is not like New Hampshire or UMass Lowell. I don't even know if I say that right. I, should, I feel like you should never have your Boston accent. In that. <laughs> Lowell. No, no, Lowell, 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 Lowell. Lowell. Lol, like lol, like with the L U L L. Um, all right. Uh, so do you hold, I guess, is there stock in the kind of fundamental math explanation of if it's if you're playing slow and you are shortening the game, you are creating an advantage for yourself if you are an underdog? Because every other sport that I follow, that's pretty tried and true. Yeah, I mean, theoretically, that's that's how it's going to work, right? Less possessions, um, less margin for error there. Like the biggest difference in styles of play in the first round is Illinois and Moorhead State. Mm. Moorhead State plays at 335th in the country, tempo-wise. <laughs> um, they might as well be crawling. Um, Illinois plays 56th. So, um, and I have, I don't feel that great about Illinois to begin with, but... Um, that's the one that that's the most glaring one. Um, similar for Auburn and Yale. Yale plays at three twenty-seven. Auburn plays at fifty-eighth. So, um, and some I mean, some of these times, some of these teams are just going to get run out of the gym. That's that happens. The the disparity in in athletes for some of these bigger programs, but um, mm-hmm. it is it is something to to take a look at. Okay, you think this cuts both ways? Like, uh, if you are an especially like if you have especially high efficiency offense offensively, you know, in particular, why why play slow? And I specifically would look at UConn because like UConn, I don't thought I didn't think of them as a slow team last year at all when they went on their title run. Um, but they're coming in right now, what bottom hundred, bottom bottom fifty, bottom fifty in terms of adjusted tempo right now. That's a what what what, yeah. what in the world happened? And like, are they actually opening themselves up to uh, potential upset by doing that? I mean, potentially, but man, they're they're just so just watching them from that Big East tournament where you thought they had them on the ropes. Uh, who was it in the final? Um, and then they just kind of blitzed them in the second half. Yeah. Um, they're uh, I find it tough to to fade them. Um, I really don't think them playing that slow is, is an issue just because they are so efficient on offense. I mean, they're they're number one in the country for a reason. So, um, but I mean, it's. It is a good point too because this this sheet is not going to give you picks. It's not going to tell you what to gamble on. But if you think that is something that is going to be effective, where a slower tempo team that can kind of take advantage of UConn, I mean, take your shots. Um, yeah. It's yeah. That's a, the tough part too. Is just nobody can. I mean, R.I.P. Tweety Dimes, who probably could. But- Nobody can sit and watch every minute of every game. God, if you guys get that reference, God bless you. That was an all-time tweet from back in the day. But that's where, you know, I, I think a combination of these free or, I mean, Ken Palm's like 20 bucks a year, guys. Yeah. If, if, you know, if, if, yeah, you can, if you really get into college basketball, you yeah. probably got to shell out the 20 bucks. But yeah. that's where it's, it's nice to do some comparison stuff. Like when you're talking about a fast-paced team that you just haven't watched because – Maybe you just didn't watch a lot of America East ball yeah. or a lot of Colonial, and it's not called the Colonial; it's called the Coastal now. But you know, uh, hoop hoop math has some of that stuff. You almost got to go site to site to site because nobody has everything I want. Where you can look at some of these, uh, you know, they have transition offense numbers, like how what percentage of their shots are in transition, 
well, how, you know, and you could also look at, you know, three point uh, rate, you know, not just, not just how many three points they're making, how many, you know, three points they're taking in relation to two points. As far as, you know, is, is this team a fast break team or is this a team that's down there and is just chucking outside shots immediately? Because not every fast paced team is fast paced for the same reason. So it is good to know why a team has a tempo like that, I think, when you start looking at the stylistic differences and how a team can, you know, if, if they are, we're not a fast break team. Uh, it doesn't matter if the other team has a really good fast break defense. It might just, oh shit, this team has a bad perimeter D. And this is a three pointing, a three point shooting team where they're getting down there every 16 seconds, three pointer up. You know, that, that, mm -hmm. it's tough again because the, there's still the huge skill disparity when you're looking sure. at some of these early games. And basically every upset ever has been, I mean, talk about the Purdue game. I mean, what, <laughs> what happened with Edie? I mean, it's just sometimes when the offense runs through one guy and that guy doesn't have the best day, and really good comment in the Discord chat the other day. Somebody said, like, Purdue might just run based on how they ref Edie. Like, if if they're going to, like, you know, if they're going to let people play yeah. some, some, you know, you don't want to do that in the first mm -hmm. round. I, like, they, they can't be just fucking them over for that. But, you know, <laughs> later in the tournament, you know, if, if they're going to let people get a little handsy and aggressive, yeah, uh, Purdue might look like hell again. <laughs> they might. I think because I guess this is a good time to kind of, well, actually, before we entirely move off, the Connecticut question, and I get it. Like, they're a truck. Um, they're very good. But, but like, I think as the NCAA is wont to do, uh, they stack the East with very good teams uh, because I don't think they necessarily want Connecticut to repeat. Or if they do, they just want it to be hard fought. Um, ironic because Connecticut's win last year came through the toughest region by far. <laughs> so yeah. it's you know getting the toughest region two years in a row is a little bit of a bad luck if you're a Husky fan, I suppose. Um, but uh, like talk me out of like going banana land here on if Northwestern gets through this eight nine because Northwestern plays slow too. And if you're playing slow and they're playing slow, then this is going to be a few. You know, there's not going to be many possessions in that game. Uh, this is, of course, I'm talking about Northwestern UConn specifically. <clears throat> and um, if you're playing slow and if you're the underdog, you know what you need? You need variance on your side. You need to be able to make some three-point shots. You know who's third <laughs> in three-point uh, efficiency in, the, uh, in, in all of college basketball? Oh, sorry. Fourth. My bad. My bad. Huge, oh, huge, fourth. huge. Yeah. There. Huge. Fourth. huge Northwestern. Cap. Northwestern is top five in college basketball in three-point efficiency. Uh, and that's going to put UConn in a little bit of a tight spot if those threes fall. And like, here's kind of one of the key things that I think really impacted Purdue negatively last year and why they were like a huge red flag, black mark right through their, you know, right through their name, you know, uh, as you looked at the bracket last year is, you know, if you get into a situation where there are very few possessions in a given game and you are at a disadvantage because your opponent is hitting threes, guess what? You need to find a way to get more possessions to close that gap. And there are only two ways to do that. And that is you are getting offensive rebounds on your misses or you are creating defensive turnovers. And the defensive turnover one is more sticky in terms of kind of identifying the teams that really tend to underwhelm. And like, you know, this is a little bit subjective because it cuts both ways. If you're like a truck of a team and you're so damn good that you don't really even need to try on defense, you don't need to like risk fouling. Like, yeah, your tone of a rate is going to suck. Um, but Connecticut is way low this year. Like they kind of have two indicators that are telling me that this is not as good of a team as the team that ultimately won as a four seed last year. 232 second in the country in, in turnover defense in terms of producing a turnover uh, on a defensive possession uh, and uh, 325th now in terms of tempo. So they're playing with a little bit of fire with those two particular metrics. And if ultimately they run up against Northwestern in a one nine, like I could, I could see it happening. And like, you know, you stare at Northwestern's line across the Bart Torvik page and well, where are they sucking? Well, they're, they're not great at offensive rebounding. Well, okay. We're talking about a situation where they're playing with the lead. We're talking about their threes are falling. Who cares if they're a good or bad at offensive rebounding? I don't care. You've already lost if they're not going in. Uh, they're bad at uh, free throw defense, which is to say 
Uh, they are putting teams on the free throw line pretty aggressively. That's 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 ref subjective to a degree. Um, but uh, and I don't really know one way or the other if uh, Connecticut is uh, good at making their free throws. But again, if you're playing with the lead, like you're going to be less inclined to foul. Um, so that might not matter. Um, and you know they're not great at uh, three point defense specifically. So if Connecticut ultimately has to shoot their way back in. That's probably the way it goes. But you're still talking about something that might be more like a coin flippy game, uh, in my opinion. Uh, and uh, let's just pretend that Connecticut finds their way through there. They may get Auburn potentially in a one four. That looks like a tough matchup. They may get Iowa State in a one two and in the Elite Eight. That looks like a tough matchup. Um, am I making a strong enough case here to kind of dissuade any of you guys from having Conne- uh, Connecticut make a deep run in this tournament? You, I mean, you make some good points. I, Northwestern, if they're hot from three, I mean, I don't think many people are going to think that's a game. If they see that in the next round, they'll be shocked to see that. But looking at the three-pointer and the points you made, I mean, I can't – I'm not going to tell you that's crazy. Um, I, I, pers- I, I still – it's not strong enough for me to necessarily think they get taken down per se. Um, but, I mean, it's the argument – can be made. I'm not going to tell you no. The yeah, last I'm, loss, I'm, I'm a little loss. out on that take, that kind of as yeah, go, Donaldson's go pointing out, too, that they, they've had some injuries for most of March. Like, True, that's fair. And I, I, don't know, I don't know that I actually have the stats to back this up. I've tried to find this, some of the overall defensive conference stats, but the Big Ten in general has a very high three-point rate as an entire league. And it's one thing if it's like eight teams in the Northeast that have this, but it's a big conference and they're like third or fourth as a league. I just think there might be bad perimeter defense in the big 10 in general. It's a really home court advantage, heavy league as well, where these teams uh, win a disproportionate rate of uh, games at home compared to the average. So I don't love these big 10 teams trying to have to do that. But like you said, if it, if shit's falling, shit's falling. Like it doesn't, it does even against a good defense, sometimes shit just falls and the other teams, you know, what are we going to do? Like suddenly we're in a dog fight with an eight seed or nine or wherever they're at. <laughs> it's wild though, that uh, UConn draws, see, like, like really, I'm just, what I'm really after here is that I'm against UConn at price. Yeah. No, but, it, it's a shitty price, like four to one. I'm not ever taking a four to one to win the tournament. I yeah. Mean, and especially it, one where the four seed is the fifth best in the country by, by a Barthag. And their yeah. two seed is the fourth best in the country by part back. Like you happen to have to go, you're going to have to go through uh, hell to get to the final four. And at that point, you know, you know, if you get Purdue and Houston as your next two rounds, like congratulations, you just had to beat, you know, four of the top eight teams in the country to get, you know, you, you to back up your, your national title, yeah. which I, yeah, I mean like that, that, that kind of path is hell. I guess Purdue would be on the other side of the bracket. They'd have to go through, you know, the yeah. worst case would be, I guess, UNC. Still, it's, it's, it's never going to be easy Arizona. to win a title. Arizona. Yeah. It's never going to be easy to win a title, Drew, but sure. it's also never going to be easy to cash a four to one ticket. <laughs> yeah, that sure. sucks. Uh, and real quick in the chat from the somebody chatting from Twitter slash X, whatever. Does this get recorded? Yeah, this is on YouTube as well. You can come find us deep down oh, sure. podcast on, on YouTube if you want to watch this. After the Virginia game, I don't know. Hopefully, you're a fan or you have some bets because there's no good reason to watch a Virginia game otherwise. Be a tough watch. <laughs> I don't know. Um, did, Tim, hey, did you? Whoa, did you whoa, have any? I, got, I got a totally different take on this. I mean, I have players. You want you want to you want every other basketball game all week to feel much more enjoyable. Watch that Virginia game. Like you're going to set the bar very low. To the uh, point. <laughs> you're going you're gonna to give yourself entertainment for days. But yeah, sorry. It is getting the getting the easy one out first. Uh, something <laughs> about Mary style before you go on the date. <laughs> but uh, Tim, did you did you look at that as far as like just pricing and anything historical or anything pop out for you? I people love futures, and I know it's love hard. I, I, I've hit one ever, and it was a, a dumb one basically because I found a, a number that was just a little high in Virginia the year after they fucked up. Uh, and that was the, do you remember that team? They basically mm-hmm. lost three games in a row, like but one, the, the it, amount of incredible shot, right? stupid luck it takes yep. to, to win all those games in a row yeah. is something. So, is I don't know, any, any takes, takes on that? Um, I had so I, from about I think November. I think I 
I jumped in on Arizona and North Carolina for the national championship. And of course they end up oh, in the same brutal. pod. Um, and they're honestly, you can probably get a similar price to what I had from back then. So I haven't added anything yet. Um, definitely not looking to add UConn at, like you said, at four to one. Um, one more point on UConn, kind of their path. They're pretty much playing home games the whole way through. That's fair. They're in, yeah. they're in Brooklyn and then they're in Boston, right? Um, they don't need to get on a plane until uh, what, Final Four. So um, just something to that, – That's true. You, they always travel well. Um, the Big East games might as well have been UConn home games, even against St. John's. Um, so something to keep in mind. But um, anything else? I haven't added anything future-wise. That's not to say that I'm not going to. Um, but, yeah, people people love futures. I think the, on, the only big one I hit was Kansas a couple of years ago. And that's fun um, too. Those are going to be open all tournament long. Like there's yep. going to be updated, you know, we play the Thursday, Friday games, even just the Thursday games, there's going to be updated, uh, you know, regional prices are going to be updated mm -hmm. to, to make the elite aid, everything. Those are a mm -hmm. lot of fun. You can, I think that's maybe where the value is, is like just keeping track of, you know, this team is just peaking. This team looked great. This team did yeah. things. I, I wasn't sure they could do against a better team because we haven't seen them play this kind of team yet. And I think I'm ready to take a dive on a, on a long yeah. shot. You're getting a little worse or odds, but you're working with a lot more information. I got a couple of theories on features that I just want to run by. You see if these pass the smell test. Um, this is basically the same setup as a, uh, you know, as a tennis slam. Right. Like you, you and the philosophy of a tennis slam, when you see the draw, you're looking for imbalance and you want to be on the soft side and you want to take your shot in the futures pool with a team or player who's on the soft side. And I got to say, the way that this is, this bracket was constructed looks pretty balanced to me. Like I don't see a left versus right or, you know, other than the Yukon particularly getting a tough region, I don't see anything that stands out as like, Man, like you could, because, because, and the reason is pretty obvious. You guys have all probably already all heard me say this before, but like, what you want is to be sitting there watching some other high consequence game between two, between Arizona and North Carolina, knowing that one of those teams has to lose and you don't have any skin in it and you're going to benefit from that. Like, that's kind of the whole name of the game where, uh, you know, you can sit back and let chaos ensue other places and then you kind of scoop the equity because team you know x who is you know represents this huge portion of the pool is now gone um and so i don't obviously see that to be applied here maybe you guys do uh in general um i know that there are people that like to take super duper long shots and just be like hey man this will be fun and i can hedge it at some point Pfft. with this many Love. games it is very 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 tough to try to get like a hedge out of this uh, or a cash out that's anything meaningful like it's just too tough um and so in that regard if you like a long shot game by game almost certainly will play better because you know you, you, when you're deciding hey am i betting i like a, a team that's not expected necessarily to win but i like their path but you know like you know or, or like you know hey i can get um <laughs> i can get <laughs> yeah escarole well, yeah and i can i can get uh uh you know hey they're gonna have to like okay what's the what's the right escarole way over parlay oh. no the, and Drew, just to, <laughs> to quick interrupt that like that's the dm i'm sure you've gotten these and tim you've probably had people ask you about this like hey how do, uh, do you remember the first beard year it was like how do i hedge this huge texas tech ticket buddy you're in the elite eight you know any games like you start thinking about hedging off half your equity and then against a favorite betting on a favorite yeah. league just doesn't work you almost you almost always have to wait until at least the final four and then that number has to be massive and honestly you have to be hoping that there's some upsets anyway otherwise you're trying to hedge by betting on a minus 400 favorite so you're betting four times what you need to be to you know take off half of your exposure it's it's so difficult for yeah. the most part you just got to let them ride until the final or like Drew's saying, do these rollovers? Because the best part about a rollover is you can you can go to rehab, you can quit and say, yeah. I'm done. I'm kicking the habit. I'm done. It's yeah. it's over. Yeah, pull the ejecto cedo at any point in time. Um, the uh, last kind of comment on Tweed Dimes. Tweed Dimes is a great example, by the way, of a guy that used to do it all by um, by watching the games. He was a he was a video guy, and then he he switched to the numbers. Um, and you know, it's 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 the evolution of a player to go from 
you know, watching every game to just coming up with a numerical approach, you know? Um, so good lesson learned there. The, um, so yeah, no, I, I, I honestly, I don't see any kind of runaway, um, you know, soft spots here. Uh, it is fun to look at, you know, across books and see, um, you know, the differences in prices at rec books for some of the futures versus like the sharper pools yeah, where there's sharp, way nice. lower margin. Um, you know, just in general, like go do a little math and, you know, do, do a little checking and just see what kind of trends observe because it's pretty straightforward as far as uh, who is ultimately being protected. Um, and uh, I guess, you know, kind of one other key question for you about information. Injuries seem to be somewhat important this year. We got a number of teams who are kind of missing key players for this tournament. Um, I am standing alone. I'm standing naked. I'm, I'm on a naked uh, um, Houston Cougars corner here uh, from a bet man made after like, you know, kind of midway through the football season, I guess, or midway through the football playoffs, I guess. And um, don't, don't love, you know, what I'm hearing about the shin injury for kind of their most important player. Um, do you have a, a general kind of, thought about where to get injury information because you know those of us who bet mba like that's like step two of your process probably yeah. uh no idea where to find anything useful for college basketball yeah it's it's definitely not, uh, to your point like mba there there's not necessarily reports that go out um throughout the day for college teams i mean twitter honestly like if you find a beat reporter for certain teams they're usually pretty plugged in um, but I haven't, and not, not that I've looked very hard, but I haven't really come across anything substantial that has good injury information. It's mostly just coming from Twitter. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's the group chat, isn't it? Like yeah. you, find, yeah. you find, you find the group cause you know, I mean, how many three, 360, whatever teams you'd say beat reporters, but nobody's going to sit and pick through, you know, obviously if you're looking for a specific one, like, but I mean, the Kansas stuff got tweeted out pretty quick today where yeah. everybody saw that, but some of these smaller ones, it is harder to find. And that's where the group chat's big. The, uh, yes, the Kansas Jayhawks are in deep, deep, deep trouble. Um, I don't know that they're ultimately uh, going to lose round one because of these injuries, but uh, they're certainly not the same team that their, their regular season data would suggest. And, uh, um, yeah, fingers crossed that uh, Rodgers gets back for Houston and he's perfectly fine. Uh, although I think Houston's round one and round two are, are soft enough, or at least I don't see uh, a potential upset there that uh, spooks me. Uh, so hopefully he can get better and be uh, 100%. But um, Bracket wise, though, Tim, do you think that's like a leverage spot? It's just taking. <laughs> yeah, Stat Fox, that's a good point from the chat there. Yeah, that do you think leverage good. wise, it's just like. Take Kansas to move three rounds. Like they're I mean, still a very good team. They still have a very good coach. They have a lot of experience, and they're, they, you know, it, it sucks. But like, if you're in a big bracket pool, everybody, every, that's all you can hear about is the Kansas injuries. Like everyone's gonna pick that against them. I think it's almost a leverage spot in big pools. Yeah, it's a great point. Like no, no one's gonna pick. They might pick. Everyone might pick Sanford, um, and then. If you Kansas won, they might get Gonzaga in the next round. Everyone's taking Gonzaga there. It's a it's a great point for the big big pools that you're in to to have some of that leverage. Because I mean, who picked the Final Four last year? What like Jesus. those teams? I mean, if you can get somebody through like that, you're in a great spot. Okay, let me give you a couple of super duper low hang low low information takes that I've had in the last week that I need you to ground truth them for me. Uh, we're going to start with St. Mary's in the West. And I know, I know you got, uh, you got vested interest in one and two meeting for the final four, <laughs> but, uh, I don't know, man. St. Mary's hits a bunch of buttons, but a bunch of hits, it's a bunch of buckets for me here. Um, experienced big men, uh, elite offensive rebounding. Um, you know, they, they match up well, I think, especially if it's one five North Carolina, St. Mary's, um, do you think they suffer from the same thing that Gonzaga tends to suffer from where they go up against the Blue Bloods and it's just the quality of competition they've faced all year has not been good enough to prepare them for yeah. that moment? Certainly, certainly possible. Um, but, I mean, they'll they'll give North Carolina a fight. They also, okay. to our tempo conversation before, they play very slow. Yeah. I think it's three 
maybe 58 in the country. <laughs> How many teams are there? So that's near dead last. Um, yeah, that's good they're going to, they're going to muck it up. So I, yeah, I'm not a fan of, as a UNC future holder, I'm not a fan of St. Mary's being up in that, in that region. Um, Cause you can, I don't disagree that they'll, they'll muck it up and I would not be shocked if they beat North Carolina. And they're in okay. The yes. I, yeah, I have them under, under seated slightly, which is funny. Oh, really? As a five? Yeah, I mean, it would have been really? like a slight under seating where it's like, okay. oh, they would have been, you know, they'd have been in the same area. Like they would have still ended up a four and probably facing the one in the in the same kind of area anyway. So not a ton, but it really, yeah, it, it's one of those teams where, you, again, I'm too old and washed. It's even worse for you, Tim, who lives in the East Coast, like staying up for a St. Mary's game. Hey, Some rough. of these conference tournament games that, you know, uh, we're in Vegas. They were kicking off at like 11:30 p.m. Eastern. Mega late, and yeah. If if they were started on time, so okay. Yeah, I, I don't know if I have a strong grasp on Gonzaga or St. Mary's, but anyone I talked to who liked North Carolina was terrified of this team. Yeah, I'm interesting that you have St. Mary's undefeated. Is that just because they swept Pepperdine? You know, I was looking at some old brackets. You know who else beats? I should have worn my. I have, I have the '83 North Carolina State shirt. Oh uh, man! North Carolina, you know what? Wow. North Carolina Wolfies, State. Yeah. That year, they were in the six eleven game. They won okay. the conference tournament. Okay. Just saying. Just okay. saying. They beat Pepperdine in double overtime in the first game. Okay. I like it. Um. All right. Uh. The um. That's so. That's one that you sounds like you kind of validated that one. I like that. Okay. Well, do you, so let me Mary's, ask you. Let me ask yeah, you. St. Mary's. Then do you like them? What are they? I think they're ten to one to win the West. Yeah, I. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I there you that go. One. Okay. That's in there. Yeah. Well, that was that was kind of why. I mean, my again, like North Carolina, and you know, you're giving me hell. Like I'm somehow biased here. Like like the, like all I'm looking at is 307th in the country in turnover defense. They run into somebody shooting well, or a game that is fewer possessions, or a team that rebounds like a f- like f- champions, like the St. Mary's Gales. And they're uh, huge. That's, they're, yeah. They have a lot of size. They're huge. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Ex- vet Bigs isn't Vet Bigs like is Vet Bigs still a thing in, co- I mean, in everyone in says college guard basketball? Play. Guard place a thing to say now, but it doesn't hurt to have huge ass rim protectors. Remember that USC yeah. team from a few years Ooh, ago yeah. that oh, man. I mean, you couldn't you couldn't drive on them. Mobley's team. Yeah. Also, Mobley. North Carolina needs to get past uh, Wagner first. They won, so you never know. Staten Island. <laughs> yeah, we, we awesome. have our matchup set. Staten Island zone, right? That's Congrats right. Congrats to the Wagner Wags. See okay. See um. In uh, there's some. Um, I feel like all the weird, wild, like crazy, like takes takeoffs are going coming in, in the uh, uh, the west here. Uh, New Mexico mushed, like kinda, like fully sufficiently mushed, or what? Kind of feels like it. Um, I'm not. I certainly don't want to bet Clemson in the first round. <laughs> um, Can you explain why this has happened? Like why they were the team? Because I honestly, like, I looked at the numbers in New Mexico. I was like, toss. Like I did not see this coming. If, if you had to seed them, let's just say you, you were putting your bracket together. Where, where's New Mexico for you? Because obviously the market says they're underseeded. They're a favorite in this matchup. Uh, a nine seed, maybe not. I mean, not much better. They're not like a. They're not getting up to that seven line. Um, but I, th- I think it has gotten a little bit too far with the publics all over them. Are they, are they still favored by? Or I have to look yeah. at this. Bridge. It, they two were point, short, yeah, two short point favorites here. Yeah. yeah. Um. Yeah, I, I don't love it. <laughs> this has been bouncing around a little bit, actually. So I don't know. That's interesting. That's an interesting market. Um. The uh, yeah. I, I honestly, I just didn't see it coming. Is it? Is it more about like hating Clemson or literally loving New, New Mexico? Because like you see people taking New Mexico in that game, and then they're like, "Well, they're already here. They could be Baylor too. <laughs> Baylor's good as hell. What? Like, why are people putting? Why is New Mexico? How did New Mexico get to be some sort of darling? I, I'm, I'm very surprised by this. Yeah, I, I can't fully fully explain it, but I mean, Clemson's definitely certainly not someone. I'm I'm backing, so I, I get the going against that. Um, I do get that, but New Mexico getting past Baylor, yeah. I don't know. Even though I mean Baylor's defense has been pretty poor of late, but I don't know if New Mexico can can keep up yeah. with it. Okay, uh, what second seventh fastest team in the country? New Mexico 
<laughs> bottom 50 three point rate. So they're literally doing it the hard way, the fast way. Uh, if I get, count me out, out on New Mexico. Um, do you think, uh, and James Coles asked the question that I was at going to ask you, but uh, um, are we at the point now where there is a premium on the 12s, right? Like the 512 nonsense has gotten pretty ridiculous. And like, yep. you know, sometimes it is literally just a public landslide to take this particular dog. Uh, but sometimes it's just the way that the, NCAA seeds these. They either put a vulnerable, you know, goodish team, they drop them down into the five team with hurt, like the Novas from what was the Nova five team, five seed a couple years ago that was, uh, you know, like had two of their, their two best players were unavailable. Like, you know, is, uh, are, are you seeing, or do you have a, just a general kind of macro thought on uh, 12 versus five matchups and the way the market's treating this? Yeah, I, I think they get more, po- more and more popular each year with the being the people want the 12 seed. Look at like, I don't. See, I don't think I've seen anyone pick Wisconsin. I don't think like James Madison is like UConn right now. Um, so I. <laughs> same with um, with well, Will UConn's Wade. vulnerable. James Madison's yes, infallible. That's, yeah. that's true. <laughs> um, Will Wade at Big Nice. He's been popular, but I mean, I, I like Gonzaga in that game. I don't really love. Okay. The, I guess the the one twelve seed, but they got a bad matchup. Is Grand Canyon. Uh, against okay. your St. Mary's team, um, yeah. and then a UAB, and they're they're not be good. Um, I don't <laughs> like them. So yeah, it's always it's always the one that nobody UAB's likes. No it'll be it'll be Grand Canyon. Then it'll, the team, it'll be it's UAB. The team, yeah. that nobody likes. They always win by like fifteen. But yeah, it it becomes such a public thing. Like oh, these twelves win a lot. Like yeah, uh, and it just gets out of there, and you do end up seeing some public darlings. Some it's more so the. It more so feels like the 11s are more successful. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't have the the data in front of me, but that just feels like it's been over the past few tournaments. Um, yeah, like yeah. Even o- Oregon's have been a popular one now too. Um, it seems like there's a lot of a love there um, coming off the Pac-12 run. Um, so. Okay. Yeah, and, and to, to your uh, point, yeah, through that fast-paced New Mexico team, I did pull up hoop math. They're 20th in the nation as far as percentage of shots in transition. Almost 29% of their shots are taken in transition offense. So I love it. it. Is, uh, I mean, if you turn the ball over a bunch against them, they're going to do it. Yep. Um, I have two round one bets, and they're both 15 seats. Which of these was the stupider bet? Peacocks plus 20 and a half, and uh, uh, La Playa plus 20 and a half. La Playa. Um, beach. The Long Beach State Beach. <laughs> They're the Probably. dirt bags uh, in baseball, yeah. which is a great name. I guess the Peacocks. I mean, I I, I like the Long Beach look. Um, okay, I like okay. that. Um, Tennessee is. I just feel like they're just gonna swallow them up um, okay. on defense. But we've also seen Tennessee can kind of go without points for a while too. So. Um, but if I had to choose it, I, I would be the St. Peter's one is one I don't like as much. Okay. Well, maybe I'm a I'm a sucker for what do you call it? The, uh, Blood uh, for punishment? No, no, no. When you're like uh, reminiscing about good times, uh, yeah. St. Peter's, um, yeah, Saint, Saint Peter's <laughs> offense is just yeah, it, it ain't there. Like it, that's a really oh, really it? tough Tennessee defense. Like it, it, that might just be an under game where hey man, if Tennessee doesn't go, if Tennessee can't score for three minutes. Like nobody might score for three minutes. No one gave us a chance against Kentucky, Andy, and that was the only like long shot fun. that won that year. That was such a fun everybody game. else lost. Um, That's I the had, thing; uh, it's so hard. I, yeah. I went back and looked, and I'm sure you've done this too, Tim. It's go back and look at like the teams that lost early, like the high seeds that lost early, and it's like, yeah, this was a shitty defense. But then you go back and look at last year; it's like, hey, here's another really shitty defense. I think it was <laughs> San Diego State. No, San Diego State. No, 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 no. Um, God, I gotta find it now. I'm gonna look. But there was there was another one last year. It's like, oh, this was a this was like you know, uh, yeah. San Diego State was a great defense. They were in the finals. Uh, oh God, oh Miami, Miami. Oh final, yeah, yeah. Final great 14. one, great call. Yeah. Not even a top 100 defense. Out of yeah. nowhere. So yep. You yeah. say like, oh, these teams are shitty defenses. They Buck every trend. Sometimes it's path. Sometimes it's just how those other teams play that day. But it isn't just, oh, this is a bad defense. They're they're God, going dude. to fall to somebody. That team dude. made the final four. 
Drake Drake should have beaten him in round. Yeah, that's, yeah, <laughs> a lot of it. Very yeah, much so. Very it's a right, single yeah. elimination tournament. So. Yes, it is. It is. It's a uh, one and done, as they say. Um, all right, I had some more kind of rapid fire thoughts, but uh, any any other like kind of key alpha that you gleaned as you went through your process developing the sheet? Um, not necessarily. It's it's really there's there's so many different. We've talked about it a lot, but there's so many different data points out there that it's sometimes it's tough to just narrow everything down. And like if you're not watching the games, if you're not familiar with some teams, like you could easily just have these numbers sway you in one way or the other and be completely wrong about them if you're not really plugged in. But um, there's not really anything else that's that stood out so far overall. Um, there's a lot of other smaller things that kind of pop out, but um, probably didn't answer your question, Darius, but... Um, no, no, I just I, you know, wanted to, wanted, wanted your, your general opinion. Um, okay. A lot of people have probably tuned in for this, so let's just talk about it. Uh, the ball, uh, the ball thing was um, maybe it may end up being a little bit of a fizzle this year because a lot of conference tournaments picked up the Wilson Evo NXT, and uh, last year it was there were I think like something like eighteen games where you could pick on this, and this year there's going to be perilously few. You kind of and you have three categories this year, right? Like there's teams who's over the balance of the entire season use the Nike or the Spalding. Uh, and then in the conference tournament, they got a chance like a game or two with the Wilson. Um, and then there's teams that have never touched them. Like basically like almost the entire ACC uh, is going to be handling the uh, Wilson for theory. the first time. I have a theory on this. Uh, okay. Well, hey, 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 let me kind of, kind of close the loop here. Um, Big 12 conference uh tournament they used it that everybody shot pretty well big 10 conference tournament used it everybody shot pretty well sec conference tournament everybody used it and they shot really poorly uh pac 12 everybody used it they shot pretty poorly so it was like kind of a mix there was kind of mixed signal from the conference tournaments proper um and i think uh we're only going to get probably about from the looks of it about 10 bites at the apple this year and if if that a lot of these teams have at least touched it once. So tough to say if this is going to be a thing, but um, fingers crossed. What do you think? What's your theory, Andy? I think the fact that we know about it means coaches know about it and they can go, I, buy, yeah. they can yeah. go buy this ball and run some practice. Use them with practice. It. Like, that's a very really, good thing. Really, <laughs> that's a very good thing. I, I think that's why you get the mix. Like it, It's one of those one-year angles where – Yeah. Uh, the, I mean, you've heard – in the NBA, you've heard players complain about ball changes like the day it happens. So, I mean, th these kids, they, they know, and they're going to bring it up. The coaches know, the assistants yeah. know, like, fuck, yeah. we're not dealing with this again. We're going to run some practices with the stupid sticky ball. Yeah. Big I'm East, not Ace, it Big East and the ACC, just if you're scoring it on Big East and the ACC are the two conferences that are, that are kind of well represented in this tournament that don't have a ton of experience. Um, did, you, did you, any any buzz about this at all at the Big East tournament? Out of curiosity, anyone hear anything there? Uh, no, no, I did nobody. Not no, it was uh, the, they were using basically everybody used Nike balls in the regular season and Nike balls in the Big East. So um, that uh, that was interesting. Yeah, no, the Big Ten was interesting because almost everybody that uh, is good used Nike all all season and then switched to the Wilson. And um, in some instances, there was a clear signal, and in others, it was like, oh, no, everybody was very comfortable with it, which made me think, like Andy brought up, like they practiced with it all week. Yeah. So nobody we, was We, we put up a few hundred surprised. free throws with this. It's fine. Yeah, yeah, everything's fine. Um, okay. Yeah, did, did you, you went to some games at the, the Garden? Um, yeah, I was, I was at the, I kind of popped in for the, the St. John's Seton Hall game. I didn't catch the whole game, but I caught the end to see a win when we thought we were going to be in the tournament. Um, right, but, uh, but yeah, the, the atmosphere is always, it's electric. It's, it's the best tournament. I, not that I've been to many other conference tournaments, but just the garden sold out getting four games in one day. It's, uh. It's a marathon drinking day too, so um, it is. It's a fun. It's a fun time. Yeah, no, there's so many. Now that we have we have tournaments in Atlantic City. There's like five in Vegas. There's one in Lake Charles, Louisiana. Like we're, we're really starting to embrace these gambling towns, and that, it just kind of harkens to a point. And I know you follow a lot of basketball, but some of these people, like 
and again, it was something that came up in this other podcast. He said, like, uh, you know, what what about the you know the guys who just haven't followed basketball a lot all year? Like, it seems like a lot of work for you know digging into this, digging into that. And I said, well, you know, do you have a favorite team? I bet you know that conference pretty well. You know, instead of going and trying to figure out a West Coast team versus some shit team from like the CAA, when you just go, you know, break down all the ACC games if that's what you watch. So I feel like sometimes you can be too close to it. But I mean, people who do have a, a home team, it feels like they do know their conference games a little better and have a have a feel for that. So maybe maybe that's some good advice for how to keep you from betting every single fucking game out there is uh, just concentrate on some of the shit, you know. I dig it. Um, one of my favorite things to try to predict is which is the f- what is the first upset we're going to get, like the first real upset we're going to get on Thursday. Because like I have I have this theory, a working theory that I have no data and no backup. It's just uh, in the back of my head. <laughs> I feel like the first wave of games, there's a little bit of tightness, right? Like before there's, you know, they, I feel like uh, that very first wave, you have some of the, uh, remember, when ba- remember when Baylor got beat by that, was it Yale? Like a super bad team, like 314. And yeah. it was like, it was like a 9 a.m. West Coast tip. And I'm like, wow, man, this game is really tipping early. <laughs> and sure enough, like it was close late and the Baylor guys just choked like dogs down the stretch. I don't even know if it was Yale, but uh, it was some, oh no, it was like a Colgate, I think. Was Colgate, Colgate plays them this week? Mm, I'm trying to think who, was, who plays Baylor. Think was, yeah, yeah Baylor, is Col- Baylor is Colgate. Yeah, Baylor is Colgate this week. Uh, but yeah, every every year there's there's a, a big one early. Last year's first upset from memory was Furman taking down the Cavs, uh, the Virginia Cavaliers, uh, in the 12 5, 12 5, I think. Uh, and then uh, right away, Arizona got popped Ooh. and uh they did arizona 0.0 favors by having them tip at 11 11 a.m pacific time against la playa um you think uh is there any merit to the idea that uh you know when games are just getting going uh and in general like the early tip which again is a very obvious and very well-priced nba thing <laughs> like tipping early is you know and being out of your 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 general um routine is never good um you got any thoughts on if that's a thing i you can't ignore it right like this it's already too there these kids are who knows when they get to their the city that they're playing in to to get acclimated to that time but sure you yeah, know 11 a.m tip time that's no fun for anybody um and are you really getting up for a game against long beach like it's you go down early then you're going to be up <laughs> real quick but yeah they fired um, their coach we're going to beat him by 20. Who do we, who with, we, uh, he's, still, house money. he's, he's still um, sitting there um, <laughs> well and kind of the same point jim did you look at this at all on some of these situation. some of these teams yeah he wants a stapler <laughs> Did you look at some of the, you know, some of the at larges, excuse me, some of the automatic bids who haven't played for a week? Did you dig into any of no. that? I'm, I hadn't had time to look back at that, but it's like, I wonder if that's good or bad. These teams have had like, you know, they had a conference championship on like Saturday or Sunday of last week. Uh, and now they're not going to play until like Thursday. It's a big chunk. Like they haven't had that much time off that since is Christmas. Long. It's a it's long a- time. You haven't had that much time off since Christmas break. It's a while, and you who knows how often these guys are practicing, too. I mean, I doubt it's every day. Um, it's rest versus rest, yeah. It's it's not something that I've dug in deep on, but it's that's worth looking at. I think they're practicing every day, but they're probably disrupted on travel. On travel, this there's probably something weird going on. Um, the uh, the Man, like so I guess 10, so, 10 so give me a practice, kills yeah. The team's mind though, it's so bad, so you don't get to actually play games. <laughs> So gut gut reaction, Duquesne's Duquesne have a chance to beat BYU in the eleven six at bad. the nine forty a.m. tip off. They're bad. Duquesne They're bad. Okay, bad, a good but, team. Um, okay, I'm and sure BYU through BYU might shoot. I think they shoot the most threes in the country. Um, okay. I think their three point rate is like a little over fifty percent, which is alarming. Um, if they're, I mean, if they're missing, they're bricking. They could lose that game, but Duquesne is not good. Um, yeah, no. I gotcha. Um, how about uh, so we'll, we'll I kind of wanted to put a line through them anyway. Okay, so then Akron Creighton is Akron the Zips 
the A to Z's. Are the Zips good enough to uh, take down the Creighton Blue Jays? Creighton, by the way, who has, seems to have some, some very questionable, very bright red uh, cells in their Bart Torvik resume. Um, should they be on upset alert? I I don't think they can get it done. I think it'll be a closer game than people think. I, I think a lot of people bet Akron when that game opened. Um, okay. I, think it, I think it'll be a little bit closer, so possibly. Okay. Uh, well, that's one that I have circled for a first half under, by the way, because the, uh, the Creighton uh, Blue Jays were Nike Elite Nike, uh, and the Akron uh, Zips were Nike and Spalding Legacy. Um, so, uh, neither of those teams has, uh, competed a full contest, uh, with the, uh, with the Wilsons. Um, the, so, okay. So the next would be La Playa, uh, against Arizona Wagner against North Carolina. We don't think that's realistically an upset, right? <laughs> no, Probably not, right? I don't think so. Morehead maybe, state, Illinois, maybe Morehead state. Um, Morehead state, Illinois. I just, I just don't like Illinois. Um, Something it's about sh- them. It's a shit defense. It's sloppy. Yes, that that's the main reason. Um, more hit state. I mean, they're not good, but I <laughs> I would not be my jaw wouldn't be on the floor if Illinois lost in the first round. Okay. Okay. All right. I'm gonna circle. Uh, I'm gonna say it's fifty fifty between Morehead State and uh, and Z- and the Zips. Um, because Creighton Creighton's got the double whammy. They can't create offense. They can't create turnovers on defense and they can't get offensive rebounds so like they're if they're at a deficit in a game where they shouldn't be losing forget about it like it's over like I, honestly and all, oh by the way they barely ever get to the free throw line they, they have the, this weird gigantic hole in their ultimate resume so uh i'll go with the zips as the first upset and uh, we will give tim Morehead state uh you know which you know which league has the lowest free throw rate in the country as a uh, league what the big the mac the Big, oh, the Big East, East does. Oh, so it is the refs? Thirty-two for thirty-two. I I wonder about that. Got be the refs. Uh, refs. I wonder if the there's refs, something yeah. with the refing because when it is dead bleeping last with a bullet, you know, lower than the Ivy League and the CAA. Yeah. Okay. Um, it, it's a really low so it, something to look at. I I'd, I'd encourage you whenever you see a, a really glaring stat that's a, either a warning uh, both ways. If this is like, Oh my God, they're amazing at this or they're horrible at this. Look at how the conference in general does, or look at uh, certain factors. Like, is it a fast paced conference? Is it a large conference? Is there a lot of good bigs? Is there a lot of good front courts? Is this a reason maybe why they, you know, this is, this is that and the other thing. So it, it's such a fucking hard puzzle. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> how many pages did you write for the damn thing this year, Tim? Uh, I think we're at 32 this year. Yeah, it's um, it's a lot of puzzling. Yeah, it, it definitely is. Um, one one thing that's I don't know if this is necessarily fun for people because not many people like unders, but um, over like the past, Patty. yeah, that's that's true. Um, first half unders in so games at the same site where let's say first game tips off at 12. Whenever this next scheduled game, if that game tips off, if it's delayed by 15 or more minutes. Last year, first half unders were twelve and five, and full game unders were eleven and six. So, twenty three and eleven overall. Since twenty nineteen, there are sixty eight, thirty six, and two. Wow. So, first half thirty four, nineteen, and one, and games thirty four, seventeen, and one. Um, doesn't include obviously twenty twenty, the COVID year, and then twenty twenty one. They all played in different arenas, so that those two years are excluded, but. Something, something to keep an, uh, an eye on. Okay. Um, wow, man. Uh, no, people I do, that. I'm going to rewind that. I think that you're, right I think you're dead wrong. I rewind people that. People do love shit like that. No, uh, yeah, I, I got to rewind well, that. Angles, right now, it no. doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah, it's a no, honestly, angle. like you want to have some skin in lots of games that you're going to sit around and watch is find something like random like this. Like you always want something that's going to be coin flip by enough that you're entertained for you know, yeah, the, the entire thing. Like, and if you've ever been to, 10, to the, race the 15, yeah, giant, the, the giant watch, watch parties, that's the entire, that's the entire game. Like people playing the dogs on the race to 10 and race to 15, race to 20, whatever. And you're sitting around at the watch party and all of a sudden randomly the entire half the room erupts because a team just got to put back layup. And you're like, what? <laughs> <laughs> I, the, yeah, the first time I was in Vegas for March, I, I'm like, what, what happened? Like, yeah, did the, I miss and somebody had to explain like, oh, everybody bet the first to 15. 
yeah. uh, on the on this underdog, and it's like fifteen to thirteen, and then they lose like you know eighty five forty two or whatever it was. <laughs> but they came out hot. That's something to dig into. Like find some teams that have come out hot. Find some teams that had good first halves. Yeah. Find yeah. some teams that start slow. Bet against. By the them. way, uh, correction and retraction. When um, when Baylor got upset by Yale, that was a twelve five. The previous year, Georgia State. They were Georgia State. You remember? Did you remember? Or did you look that up? Somebody had it in the chat. <laughs> oh, somebody had it in the I, chat. Oh, okay. yeah, Donald, I can't. I can't steal this. <laughs> yeah, it was Georgia State. Uh, that was uh, that was the one where the dad was on like the little kneeling yep. on the scooter, and his kid was just lighting up the fell over. Yeah, his yeah, that's right. His kid went to the NBA, played for the Celtics. Am I am I tripping? I don't remember. I think he did. I think he had a cup of coffee in the NBA, uh, although I don't know. Yeah, Ron Hunter and his son was RJ Hunter. RJ Hunter. And he did have a cup of coffee with the Celtics. He played, uh, and then he had a cup of coffee with the Maine Red Claws, and then a cup of coffee with the Chicago Bulls, and then a cup of coffee with the Windy City Bulls, the Long Island Nets, the Rio Grande Valley Vipers, the Houston Rockets. Some of those again, don't sound like. The Rio Grande Valley Ripers, the Erie Bayhawks, back with the Celtics in the main Red Claws. Uh, and then he went to, uh, he learned Turkish. Uh, and uh, probably should have played for Turk, if you, Turk Telcom, and Galatasaray, Andy's team. Oh, God. He's had that a long my, career. That is my team. Uh, my, my, <laughs> I, was, I was getting somewhere. That That is my team. Um, yeah, if you want to go NBA to NCAA connections maybe we are backing james madison a young man big old dude think he played i mean he's at least i think he's their center tj bickerstaff <laughs> son of uh i can't think of the dad's name who's what's the coach's name jb jb bicker more letters yeah, yeah. they like yeah, the initials he, there huh? your fourth yeah. place finisher for coach of the year this year probably not a bit no big deal Mm-hmm. Stetson and Oakland first to fourteen, fifteen says Donaldson. Can't Ooh. fade him. Can't fade him. Ooh. He knows what he's talking about. He came up with Georgia State before anyone else. Um, okay, so uh, just rapid fire teams to watch for the ball: uh, Vermont, Duquesne, <laughs> Dayton, Duquesne. NC State, Duke, Clemson, North Carolina, Virginia, UConn, Marquette, Creighton, Longwood. Western Kentucky, Yale, St. Peter's, Akron, Howard. Oh, Howard's already done. Wait a second. We can test this right now. Howard played uh, who? Wagner? Wagner. Wagner. Uh, See, Wagner, they played with the Evo, the Wilson, all year long. Probably how they got the better of Howard today. Although, did they cover? They won. Yeah, uh, yeah, they they were a three point dog. Okay. We'll see, they went out right because they were familiar with the ball. That's there we go. That's just math. <laughs> it might have been that they're just two really bad teams. It might Howard, be. Howard's a tough hang. Um, yeah, uh, San Diego State, Boise State, Nevada, and then we're running out here. Colgate, that's it. That's the whole list. Everybody else has either played with the Wilson all season long or used it in their conference tournament. Unbelievable. Gun to your head, Tim. A thirteen or fourteen that wins outright. Ooh. He had eight well, he already picked. Something. He already picked Morehead State. Yeah, he did, he did pick Morehead State. I want um, a different one. Okay, let's see. Thirteen or fourteen. Um, then I'm going to hold him to this so hard. Yeah, that's fair. That's why I'm trying to. I'm picking one. Uh, give me. I Can hate to do Alabama. it. Can we kill Alabama? Yeah. Yes. Um, give me Charleston. Thank you. I love Fuck Alabama. Alabama. All right, I love it. You Very know, the, cool. the last time they lost, February first, running hot. Running Charleston, hot. really? Yeah, they've they, they haven't they, lost since February first. They rip. Yeah, they've won like twelve or thirteen okay. straight. They they All rip right. through the CAA. They're, Can we go back? Speaking of ripping through and having not good, lost it's a really good run. offense. When was it's the like last time? Uh, when is the last time the Dukes lost? James Madison. Yes. Oh. And also, you know, they set that whole little se- section of the bracket up so that the that the lead on Monday can be even Duke's, even Duke's longer, Duke, right? Appalachian like Duke, State, Duke. January twenty seventh. Jeez, it's a nice time. I, they only lost three times all year, right? Yeah. Started off their season with the win against Michigan State, if I'm not crazy. In overtime. Team seated above them. 
Huh. Interesting. Huh. What? So what is the? What is the? Uh, is it just a mush stink on James Madison, or is there some reason to think that they're not actually as good as everyone? Like uh, once once a team gets like trendy, like, people start hating them. Like, it's like uh, oh, public dog can't bet them. Bet who you want. Okay. Um, what? Uh, what? They're playing in Brooklyn, right? Wisconsin and. Uh, they can, I mean, I, I guess I just, it's not that big of a spread. James Madison can beat Wisconsin, and then they definitely, they definitely have a realistic chance to beat Vermont, right? <laughs> <laughs> I'm pulling an Andy with the tweet like you right yeah, <laughs> are no. looking forward to. I people all mad. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, uh, in seriousness, uh, I think Duke is, uh, is I, I'm surprised that there are very smart people in the space who uh, have sincere belief that Duke is, uh, uh, is going to do anything special. But we'll see. Maybe I'm just biased because I want Houston to go. The, I'm, I'm, I'm full on Cougar Town. Um, you think, am I right in saying that the uh, South is the softest bracket for any of the one seeds? Like, in general, there's kind of, does Houston have the softest path through the Final Four? Yeah. It's, it's okay. certainly not UConn and certainly not North Carolina, like we discussed. And Purdue, I mean, something. Something about Purdue. Um, I don't know if it's Matt Painter. Okay. He, he loves losing before. Help, help, me find, help me find the team. <sighs> Purdue, Purdue's run ends where? Gonzaga. Stage of elimination. Gonzaga. Really? Gonzaga. Yeah. Gonzaga's got him. Okay. Um, I mean, okay. would I be shocked if Purdue blows him out by 20? No, but I mean, Purdue's de- – I think you actually mentioned it um, earlier in the week. Purdue's defense is kind of leaking oil a little bit. Um, sure. And to the, kind of the point before, if Edie gets into foul trouble, I mean, we kind of saw it on, on Sunday in the first half. I think it was, was it Sunday or was it Saturday. Um, one of the first halves of the Big Ten games where he was on the bit two fouls right away. He's on the bench. Um, yeah. That changes their whole dynamic. Um, so – I, I don't mind taking a shot on Gonzaga. Um, they're I think they're they're also ten to one to win the Midwest. Mm-hmm. Worth a stab. I I ultimately I don't think they would get past Tennessee, um, but we've seen Tennessee go cold on offense. If um, if what's his name isn't going off, um, I'm forgetting his name off the top of my head. Um, but we know who we're who we're talking about. Um, so the uh, so I guess is. I'm. I am. I don't really have a strong read one way or the other on what is wrong with Tennessee's offense. Um, is this a Rick Barnes thing, or is it just a? Is it a personnel thing? I think it's. I think it's more personnel. People are going to want to pile on Rick Barnes though, because he's had similar to Matt Painter, just not as much success in the tournament. But I think it's more personnel based because okay. um, I don't have the guy's name in front of me. I feel I'm embarrassed for You're talking about the whole. top scorer, Dalton. Dalton yes, connects. there it is. Thank you. Okay. Yes. Sure, um, sure, sure. If he's not, if he's off, the, he doesn't have really the surrounding okay. core to kind of pick him up. Um, okay. So if he's not scoring 25 plus, they're, I, okay. I think they're in trouble. Um, Dude, he shoots 40 percent from three. Yeah, he's he's awesome to watch. Yeah, uh, and he shoots deep threes too. Um, that would be the only thing I think really holding back from saying with a bullet, hey, Tennessee's Final Four. Okay. I dig it. I dig it. Um, weird uh, question that we didn't re- necessarily prepare you for because we are NBA men. Um, any players that you haven't seen a ton of this year that you're kind of keen on getting a feel for or think can make like a little little uh, little pre sort of draft riser buzz uh, that we should keep an eye on? Yeah, I mean, this this year, is, I think it's pretty well known. This pre- draft is pretty weak. but um, yeah, right. this, this is kind of like the combine for – it, it is. Hey, man. Oh, dude. No, here, let me ask you uh, uh, the same question in a different way. Um, over under half a player that it plays in the tournament is selected in the top five. <laughs> this is this, that, that's, that's how, how bad this is. Um, that's how bad this class I'll is. I'll say over just because that's, I don't think, ultimately. You just need someone... one guy. You yeah, just you need, need one, one team guy. and one guy. Yeah, you need you need one guy. Um, I but there's there's not necessarily anyone that I like. You're you're not going to see like like USC, isn't it? Everyone will want to see what Bronny James is is looking like. Who knows what that would be if he could take a leap, maybe up draft boards. But they're not in the tournament, so it doesn't matter. Um, <laughs> there's not like an exciting. I mean, 
what what, do you, what is your guys' opinion of of Edie? I think if he goes in round one, then somebody's done him a favor. <laughs> yeah, it's a it's a weird fit at the next level, isn't it? Yeah, I, I mean, he might be how like many, a how many, how many guy. True, I, I don't know. Can he be as many like true guy? centers are there in the NBA right now today? Yeah, uh, and well, and like is him. it is it because those guys are just freaks? Those two are MVP caliber players that just happen to be that big. <laughs> I mean, they're not even true centers because they're facilitated. No, well, but, you know, I mean, Jokic is a facilitator. However, however you want to put those a, two, and more, I mean, Embiid is more of a post player anyway. So, yeah, I don't know. Still, um, yeah, I guess yeah, the, they, they the just one, happen to be that big. The yeah. one guy I guess would be Reed Shepard from Kentucky. He's probably okay. the because all the you other think the he other could top, go top, guy, top five connect. I just I. Could. I yeah, Who? I just the other okay, good. No, I'm not top five. He's like 15 ish range, right? Most of the other top I five think. guys are either overseas Some or France or G League. There's guys. a couple of French, there's the yeah. other French guy. There's a, two or three French guys. I looked at an NBA mock, Nikolai, Nikolai, uh, Topic, buddy. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> there's three international guys and two G League guys, I think, that realistically probably go top five, which is insane. Um, Reed, yeah, got yeah, Reed Shepard could go top five. Cody Williams from Colorado could go top five, but he needs to play better. Yeah, uh, he actually then, needs to play his way in. Honestly, and then you're looking at uh, Filipowski from Duke, probably, and then um, yeah. the center from UConn, um, Klingham. Klingham, yeah. Um, okay, that's so. It's really not a very appetizing uh, okay. NBA okay. Uh, NBA prospects. Interesting. <laughs> what yeah, happened? The, the the Australian <laughs> kid. I forgot about him, Alex Sar. Okay. I'm just I now I'm now you drove me nuts and I actually pulled up a mock draft. Yes. So it, yeah, we went <laughs> France, Australia, Chile. Well, he's he plays in he plays in Perth, but he's French as well. Yeah. Sar. Yeah. But he, he plays for Perth, so he's Australian now. Either way, that's how they make, how the rules they work, make yeah. you do that. Uh, and then, yeah, yeah, they have Reed, they have Reed Shepard fourth, and yeah, Topic fifth. So um, you set a pretty good line there, over under a half, uh, <laughs> okay. top five. So <laughs> unreal. Um, okay, well, uh, yeah, no, I think honestly, Edie's probably border. He's probably borderline, um, borderline top thirty-two. I would say. If he goes in the top 32, then again, yeah, somebody's done him a solid. Um, they have connected 12 to the Bulls. Yeah. Edie, um, so this is this is a mock from the Athletics. They have Edie in the 21st to the Knicks. I'm sorry, Tim. Oh, oh. <laughs> I had to, that. that no. If you they see my face. Back, I mean, Knicks have so many good things. You see my face yeah. light up when I saw oh, that. Man. No, laugh. thank you. The Knicks God have like the second that. most efficient big in the NBA in Isaiah Hartenstein. <laughs> he's gonna get paid. Yeah, he is. He's a, he's a good player. He's like, you can you can win with him. Um, okay. Uh, final predictions here. Final four. Who's who's uh, your your? Uh, I guess um, how many Plans brackets? Fucking flags. Well, yeah. Well, before that, kind of tell me about your your bracket. Uh, kind of overall uh, outlook. Like outs. Like I'm assuming the FSM bracket matters the most, and I'm sorry Obviously. that I keep winning that. Yes, that's um, a but, uh, <laughs> painful experience. Been, I've had so. the winner three years in a row, so I'm running hot. Um, but uh, I don't think I won all three years, but I definitely had the winner, the correct winner. Uh, somebody beat me last year, I think. Um, might have been BP. I forget. Uh, but yeah, how many brackets do you enter? Like, uh, and in general, do you do same bracket in every one, or do you try to tailor your brackets to kind of this optimize your win probability of the given pool? Yeah, I'll, I'll do a couple brackets. I'm not as much brackets focused as I'm more in like survivor pools and, and things of that nature um, or like ATS capture pools. Those are fun. Um, but I'll do if I do multiple brackets, it'll it's not going to be the same one because um, okay. if that goes down in flames, then it's just out the window. Okay. Um, I like to do a couple different ones. Um, but yeah, FSM one, I'll do my best to uh, <laughs> be on top of the board this, this year again. The last year was a mess. Okay. I always who, say I'm going to do like multiple, you know, versions, but then, you know, I run out of time and, oh, you have another ESPN one? What if I just pull my bracket from the other one I made? And okay. Have like six of the same. I've gotten so many emails from like every contest I've ever entered. 
I try to set aside. It's nice that we did this a day early. So I have tomorrow night to like, I'm going to, I just set aside a two hour block to like enter all these contests. Yeah. Just pissing away Absolutely. money, $50 at a time for yeah. bracketless brackets, which I believe is just like survivor. There's some other survivor ones or some just good bracket contests. Yeah. I usually, if somebody has some free ones, I'll always enter those. Just cause yeah. You're already on a site where I have a bracket. I'm just copying it over. <laughs> Fuck it. I'm okay, so who, uh, yeah. Plant some flag. The, the men who are the, the, the players in the FSM pool, they're men of integrity. They're not going to steal your picks. Who plants some plant your final four I flag might. and your champion flag for the FSM pool. I'm just curious where you're going. Where, okay. where you're at. Uh, East, I'm I'm going UConn. I okay. I can't I can't Don't go overthink against that. It. Uh, West, I'm going Arizona. Okay. South, this is where I kind of go get away. Me. Yeah, okay. I go Duke. I'm going Duke. Oh, oh buddy. Um, All right. I got them. I got them over Houston, and then I really don't think Marquette. Yeah, the bottom half of that. Yeah, the bottom really half of that, that. Is, Bottom half of the South is weak sauce. Yeah. And then I'll go Tennessee out of the Midwest. Okay. Um, okay. Then I've got Arizona and Tennessee in the final. And Ooh. because I have an Arizona future, I'll pick Tennessee. <laughs> hey man, if they get if they if Arizona gets there and they go to gotta gotta go against Yukon and Tennessee, guess what they got going for them? That game, those games would be played in Glendale, Arizona. Arizona. Yes. <laughs> yeah, so that, that is, yeah. I filled one out today, went Creighton Yukon final just because that's fun. That's just it's such a that's I such a it. fun storyline. Like, oh, if I'm right, you're going to be the first one more. that's going to be able to say my bracket's been busted, or and you're going to have a whole big crybaby <laughs> tweet about it. I'll be sweet. back for more. I, I I'm just happy I remembered. I'm like, because after you know that joke I made about it's you know fifty to enter, a hundred if you are in yeah. this chat and forget to enter. You didn't enter last like, year. Well, no, I forgot to enter last year. I got so oh, busy, I, I don't even think I was in it. And I, I keep not getting drawn for the uh, home run derby. I'm like, I got to get in one of these damn contests. Oh, man. Um, somebody's asking here, Tim, what is ATS capture? I'm intrigued by that so as there's, well. There's no skill whatsoever. You just get assigned a random team. So let's say you get Houston in the first round. If they cover, or actually a better example is let's say you get Longwood in the first round. If they cover against Houston, you capture Houston and you get them in the next oh, round. Fuck, that's fun. Um, they, oh, yeah, it's just wow. totally... No, no skill whatsoever. Um, it's it's another just fun. It's way like to it's like uh, that's like Super money. Bowl. It's like Super Bowl squares. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Oh, that's cool as hell. Uh, real quick on Calcutta strategy, I'll just give you my two cents on this because I played a lot of them. Um, do your best job of estimating the pool size that's before you start. Only that's, thing. That's, <laughs> well, there's two things. You just use Bart Torvik's probabilities or just use him at Downway Houston because Bart, for whatever reason, loves Houston. He's the only person on earth who loves Houston more than me. Nice. Um, and and then, you know, kind of do a good job of estimating the uh, uh, the, the pot size uh, and just in general, the betting, you know, betting appetite of your players. Um, and then bid, bid, bid early. Get Get a couple of teams early. In fact, get the first team. Don't even, you don't like them? The I don't care. Get them. Get them like the expected value almost always tilts in favor of the early teams, especially if it'll, you're in a it'll pool. be the best value. It almost especially always if is. you're in a pool of inexperienced players, almost always. And especially, then and then um, bid up, bid up your opponents late. Find a couple guys who actually don't have, have no anyone. Yes. They have no teams, and when they're bidding on someone late, just just take them to the cleaners. <laughs> just make them pay for it. On the early side of things, too, the one seed, the early, the first one seed is usually I find the cheapest to go. No question. Everyone's no just question. bidding everyone up. So no get that question. first one. Get your Drew. Get Houston. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Get your yeah. Get your get your one, and then uh, everything else breaks your way after that. I'm gonna have All to right. find an ATS capture. That's a fun one. That does I play. Sound fun. I play in just the dumbest. You you think that one's no skill? Mm -hmm. I play in one where you, every. Uh, what is it? 32 people send this one guy a hundred bucks. Uh -huh. And then at the bar last night, he draws the names. You get two teams. Oh, you get two teams. You get two like, random teams. Yeah. And I, we play that way eight, with, yeah, we do the derby draw that back. way with 20 yeah. guys. And uh, that's yeah. a ton of fun, but it's just because you, know. you can end up like 
legitimately, you can end up with two six, and I have. I've ended up like a fifteen and a sixteen. You get your money back at the elite eight. So like you know, it's just like oh, that was a donation. Like, it is fun because he just sends the picture of the whole sheet. It's fun to look at like the ones that really got fucked. Like oh god, mm-hmm. you're done. But I ended up with NC State and McNeese. So that was like the pool that Newman did last great. year with for baseball. You remember that? Yeah, 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 yeah. What was that? Was oh, that? No, was that? his was a thirteen league. Remember? Yeah, yeah, gotta, but it was like you, score, you they, just pull. Yeah, you just got you we, just got to sign a random did, team. Get random just, teams. Yeah. Oh, thirteen yeah, run pool. Score exactly. Yeah, thirteen run pool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Fun. Fun. Yep. yeah, that was a ton of fun. Ooh, um, here's, a, right. here's a fun question for you. I know these markets might not even be up yet. I feel like these they? go up. Are they I not? Feel like, I feel like they go up around the Sweet Sixteen for the most part. If they're up now. There's just it's like two hundred percent hold, and I don't know if I'd get too involved. But do you have any names you're thinking about for most outstanding um, player? I'm gonna see if there's and there might be a market already. Um, yeah, Juwan mm. Rogers. Don't overthink it. Um, TJ Bickerstaff. <laughs> I don't see a market here. Go on, Roberts. Sorry, did I say Rogers? I meant Roberts. Juwan Roberts. Uh, DraftKings has it. 365 oh, has it, according to the chat. All right, let's 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 see if we can pull that up here. Madness mm-hmm. props. Okay, while you're uh, while you're pulling that up, uh, yep. we didn't we haven't talked zero uh, survivor strategy. Um, I don't know that I have one because I've only ever played one year and I got far, but I wasn't really in contention when I looked at what teams I had left. Um you got any thoughts on like general strategy for survivor? Like you, you go for specific seeds at each round when like you, like you kind of just have to take the best eight, nine in round ones. Cause you know, they're going to lose to the one type of yeah, deal. Yeah. That's, that's definitely a, a one strategy. Right. Um, it's basically it's first round is if you can kind of look at the second round matchup where, you know, a team's just has no chance whatsoever. Um, that's always good. Um, but also teams like you, just don't like that are you don't think are going to go far that other people might so like a a Creighton for example like if you don't like Creighton like get them out of the way use them um okay that off the bat because the worst I've done this in years past where you get to the final four the elite eight if you're still in it and you got one team left two teams left you fuck yourself and you're you're out because you don't have enough teams to use um so you definitely don't want to go top heavy with your with your best teams, one save one seeds, um, unless you think a one seed is going to be susceptible in like a Sweet 16 or Elite Eight, and, and are comfortable picking against them. Um, survivor pools are fun, man. Okay. Yeah, you, you got to find someone who has just horrible value in the next round. Yeah, that's you want the they, biggest they, delta between your yeah. expected win probability and the round you're picking them in, and their expected win probability in the next round. Like, right? Like that's that's ultimately what you're trying to do. Yeah, you're, yeah. you're trying to you're way. basically doing the opposite of the ATS capture. You want to be playing a team that you'll ultimately be picking against in the yep. next round. Yeah. So that you don't get stuck that way. How about like the end game strategy is so fucking hard, man. Like it's when it's down to eight. Because you, you, yeah, you literally have to like the way the brackets are set up. You have to leave yourself certain teams against each other because you're going to run into the issue of oh, I have UNC. UNC is the only team I have left, and you're you're screwed because if you're you can't hold them to the final four, you got to use them if they're the only team left, and then you run out of teams. I've just seen so many people run out of teams, and they just they don't think about it enough in the beat in the get go. Gotcha. And okay. sometimes you can play it smart and you still just run out of teams. It was just uh, these teams, you, you thought you had an angle. Um, you know, you, you picked a team that has a terrible matchup the next round. That team, that player gets hurt and that team gets upset as well. And suddenly the team that you, you really wanted out wins the next four games. And you're looking at it yeah. in the final four as a, you know, a couple teams you can't use anymore. You know, who, uh, you know who stands out big time is Nebraska. 61% to win round one, 10% to win round two. Yeah. Like if you can drop, yeah, drop off a delta of 50% uh, from round one to round two from, uh, and, you know, if you if you don't have the risk appetite to take a, a team that only has a 61% win, win, win probably, I guess that's one thing. Uh, San Diego State's interesting to me because they have like 80% win prob. And then the next round, we're expecting something like 23%. Um, that's a maybe, huge step down. Maybe Kansas. 
Kansas. Yeah, that's a great call. Yeah, Kansas beating somebody good without their best player. Not not necessarily, not necessarily something I would call likely. Um, yeah, what's Kansas's win probability is they're about eighty percent. They're gonna they're gonna drop to about you know high, either high thirties, low forties. That's a nice one. Good call. Are there specific dates for the Sweet Sixteen yet? Um, yeah, we don't know which region. Do we know which region is playing which? Uh, it should. It's the twenty eighth and 29th. I just don't. I'm not sure. If we're not. Sh- yeah. Well, do we know who, who I, got? I what, mean, would you, yeah, wouldn't Saturday teams play early, or do they mix that up? I, no, that's no, something no, to think they, about. That's region, something I'm gonna have to dig into because they, once they start mixing, for uh, I mean, you're still in your same region for Sweet Sixteen. You would think Saturday teams play Thursday, Sunday teams play Friday, to give no. them the same amount of rest. You know what Before I mean? If you section, play, if you play your two, round of thirty-two games, in the if you regions, play your round two, of thirty-two two, games, yeah, they had it's totally divorced. It's totally divorced. It, they reset Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday for I Sweet Sixteen. Yeah, that. it's to, it's totally divorced. Um, let me, I can. I mean, there's not a big I difference between this. like four or five days, you know, off, but it's that's um, frustrating. It's frustrating because yeah, on the half is pointing out in the chat if you're listening to this that some survivor leagues go by day. Yeah, yeah, Nate, they, they, that, that almost almost all of them. Yeah, almost mine, them mine do. do the bracketless yeah. one for sure does. Yeah, Maverick McNeely, uh, Brian Harmon, Sam Ryder, Giorgio. Is those those are your one and done options? No, those are somebody asked for Valspar picks in the chat. Oh, okay. People it's going to be 20, very windy. I think twenty-two and hard. Oh my god, the weather's going to be horrible down in uh, down in that part of the Florida. You know, fuck, you live there, Georgia. I think you're from Tampa. Yeah. Okay, you ready for this? So uh, the West and the East are on for Thursday, Saturday. Yeah. Uh, the South and the Midwest are on Friday, Sunday. Friday, Sunday. So the left side of the bracket is on Thursday. The right side of the bracket is on um, Friday. Which makes it, which actually that that helps because that way you're picking a team that are that will eventually play. You're picking between two teams where you're picking one to go to the final four that you can't use, and you're saving one to go to the final four that you will have to use. Mm -hmm. Like that's ultimately how it's supposed to be set up. Yeah, I I usually split this survivor pool with a buddy, and we're on the phone each night for like. 45 minutes trying to. Yeah. <laughs> it's ridiculous. Well, I've been there. I've been there. I helped a guy yeah, one time who I, I didn't even have any skin in it. He just like couldn't help but like kind of game theory everything out. And I'm like, look, man, I'm, like you got this. Just believe it. Just go with, just go with what's, 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 what's your heart telling you, man? Believe in yourself. <laughs> believe uh, in yourself. I don't care the, anymore. I, I still can't find the outstanding player odds for the life of me, but. Um, yeah, I don't see him at DraftKings either. I, I have the weird, like, New, I have the weird New of, like, Jersey the laws about, one. Yeah. That's probably yeah. It. yeah. So, like, Tim, Tim's probably on New York, New Jersey as well. Yep. There are different rules in different states about betting on, like, like New York doesn't let you bet Heisman, so I really doubt they're going to let you bet on outstanding player. If somebody has those odds, if you want to screenshot them and, like, reply to one of the tweets that we have with uh, this live stream, that'd be awesome. Mm-hmm. From, Cause like three, I, I live in a state where I'm going to only be able to pull up like the generic one and they almost always pull it out of Jersey. So I often can't see that. I couldn't get odds for like the MAAC because of the Jersey teams. Yep. I had to ask somebody in Illinois to send me screenshots from DraftKings so I could use yeah. the, you know, legal book screenshots for stuff. Yeah. Um, Hey, we have a, a real time test of the, uh, of the uh, Wilson balls ball angle. You ready? Yes. Colorado State used the Wilson Evo next all year long. Virginia U has never touched the thing unless they have been using it in practice. The first half looks like Colorado State is going to cover, although I don't want to jinx it. 22 14 as we are talking live. There's all, um, also the issue with Virginia just as a full. No, it's the ball. Team. It's probably the ball. It's got to be the shoes. Definitely the ball. Uh, yeah. Tim, oh, tell, speaking tell of, It's got to be the shoes. I finally watched Air on the plane oh, yesterday good. back that's from Savannah. Movie. Why didn't people talk about that more? That was really, really, I don't think really it was that well received. It, I it, was it was really, really good. good. You know what else was a good movie? Let's do movie time quick. Uh, Blackberry. 
I watched Blackberry, that yes. Blackberry was Yes, I watched it on a plane. Ben was so yes. good Yes. Like, talk about ideal plane movies, man. Like, Air was Air was awesome. Blackberry was good. I said, that's fine. I watched that on a plane, too. Yeah. I watched, at, uh, uh, we, Drew and I both watched Poor Things the other day. You watched Poor <laughs> Things on a plane. I, I can't imagine that on watching that on a plane. Yeah. I just remember, like, oh, this, 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 uh, Emma, Emma Stone. Yeah. Emma she, Stone. Uh, yes. Yeah. I'm just Best like how it started. It's like, oh, I can't imagine there's gonna be much for sex scenes in this. And then it's <laughs> two straight hours of fucking. Yeah, the entire the entire middle hour had uh, full frontal seven times <laughs> just a, ball it's, parking. It's like, a lot. Uh, I know yeah, what I'm doing there was, right now. Yes, yeah. then yeah. and it was uh, no no discrimination by gender either. We guess we saw some weird old Frenchmen's uh, dongs as well as uh, a good amount of. Uh, uh, Emma Stone. So yeah. thank you. Tough, tough to watch that Nolan on a plane. Rundle. Somebody, somebody just tweeted me the, uh, the most outstanding player odds. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Well, you know, hat tip to Yorgos for making that movie and having it win Oscars because it was oh, weird. <laughs> it was weird. Um, all right. Well, uh, Tim, yeah, talk, let, talk about the yeah. sheet quick. Yeah. Let, let, let the people know. Yeah. Go um, 32 pages, 10 bucks. Price hasn't changed in forever. Um, it's going to be the best guide. If you know nothing about college basketball, just get this. It'll guide you through picking brackets. I've had friends, wives, girlfriends pick brackets better than me just going off this sheet. So uh, it's pinned on my Twitter at thold42, uh, madnesssheet.com, 10 bucks, best 10 bucks you'll spend on the entire tournament. I'll put, again, if you want to check it out, because it's just 10 bucks for a shitload of info, I'll put the link in the description of the YouTube and the uh, and the podcast notes as well, if you want to go. Or just at thold42 on Twitter. He's not hard to find. I'll be here all March. Well done, man. Let's go, Cougs. Let's go, Cougar Town. I'm looking for the outro music. And away we uh, an hour and 30 minutes of dedicated to uh, college basketball all year. Uh, I think that was uh, I think that was well worth it. I enjoyed it. It's uh, it's the best time of year. I think. Uh, what? Are, are you watching the games? Or uh, Vegas. Question mark. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna head to Vegas for Friday Saturday. I got invited to a 